Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about a very, very interesting topic. Now, this doesn't mean you have to have cancer. It could just mean that you're looking at prevention. It could mean that you're looking at maintaining a healthy body, a healthy immune system. Today, everyone's chasing immunity. How do you build strong immunity? Because we all know that immunity prevents the onset of disease. We all know that with a strong immunity, we can heal from some of the diseases that we have. So we constantly Google the top 10 foods for boosting immunity. And we get broccoli and cauliflower and garlic and superfoods and coconut oil and all of that stuff. Then we Google the top 10 foods for heart health and we Google the top 10 foods for constipation and belly fat loss and all of these things. That's all good. That's good information. But we need to understand how food works in the human body. Okay, today I want to discuss a process that I would encourage everyone to understand because it plays a huge role in your investment in health. You see, health is not just about how much you can bench press, how much you can squat, your access to organic food, you know, how soft your mattress is so that you can get extra sleep at night, chanting, doing yoga. It's not just about that. It's beyond that. It's about understanding what your kind of body really needs for your life and for your health. Because each and every one of you out there right now are built up of trillions of cells. And each of your cells vibrate and respond to biology, physiology, chemistry in your body, which is different from the person sitting on your side. From, it is different from the sibling in your family. It is different from the person in your social group. All of our cells are different. That's why we're all unique in our own ways. We're unique because we have a unique genetic structure, which is based on the health and basically the constitution of our cells. The process I want to talk about today is angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is a very simple process that happens in everyone's body. It is the process that the body uses to build blood vessels. Simple. The process that the human body uses to build blood vessels. Now, we all know the function of blood vessels. We have blood vessels, and beneath these blood vessels, we have billions of something called capillaries. Capillaries and blood vessels have many functions. Predominantly, the function that we learn back in biology class in school is the function of a blood vessel is to carry blood. We carry blood to billions of cells, trillions of cells in the human body. What does blood carry? Blood carries oxygen from the air that we breathe and nutrients from the food that we eat. So the blood vessels carry blood to all of our cells. We all understand that every cell in the human body requires nutrients from the food that we eat and oxygen to survive. The same requirement by cancer cells as well. Cancer cells, as you know, are cells that grow uncontrollably in the body. They grow abnormally. A normal cell has a mechanism to self-destruct and kill itself. It's called apoptosis. Now, when that mechanism is defected, your cell uncontrollably grows and grows and grows and it spreads and spreads and spreads. And it starts finding new pathways to find nutrition so that it can grow because every cell, a healthy cell, a sick cell or a cancer cell requires nutrients and oxygen. So when we have cancer, we can go on feeding ourselves with more and more protein and sugar and all the foods. But always remember, you're feeding the good cells and you are also feeding the cancer cells. So when it comes to cancer, there is chemotherapy. And if you're on it and your doctors put you on it, you got to take it. There is radiation. There is surgery. There is hormone replacement. Now, beyond all of this, there is also something called starving cancer cells, changing the environment in your body. Right now, I'm in a small room. By changing the environment in the room, by making it, making it a little damp and changing the temperature, I can start breeding fungi and bacteria by just changing the environment. And if I rechange the environment, allow a little fresh air in and rechange the temperature, I can kill the fungi and bacteria by doing nothing but by changing the environment of this room. Now take that and apply it to your body, a body that has cancer, a body that is sick, the environment of your body is allowing the cells to grow and to spread. Yes, take chemo to poison the cells, take radiation to burn it, do surgery to cut off the cancerous parts, do hormone therapy to block hormones that are feeding the cancer. But what you have in control is changing the environment of your body, making the environment unfavorable for the growth and spread of these cells. So angiogen uh, angiogenesis is a natural process that we all have. We need it to survive. It is the body's process of building blood vessels. Now, anti-angiogenesis is basically controlling the growth of blood vessels which are not required to grow anymore. 
So when these cancer cells develop their own pathway to get nutrition, it's called stealing of nutrients from the healthy cells. That's why you see patients who are sick, patients who have cancer, they become thinner and thinner. One of the main symptoms is rapid weight loss. Why? Because these cancer cells growing in the body is robbing nutrition from the healthy cells. So you automatically start losing weight and you start becoming thinner and thinner. And you got to break the cycle. And that is what is anti-angiogenesis, breaking the cycle, because we have to understand that the unnecessary blood cells growing are feeding your tumors. That's how a tumor grows. A tumor grows with nutrients from the food that you eat and oxygen. And something is supplying these tumors and cells with nutrients and oxygen. And we got to break that cycle. Now, there's several medications that break that cycle. But beyond that, what is in our control that we can do? Yes, nature has blessed us with certain foods which are commonly available, certain herbs that are commonly available that have an anti-angiogenic effect on these blood vessels, which means when we're eating the right foods in synergy with one another, like I said, you can Google, you can Google 10 foods right now and eat those 10 foods and not get better because you see everything works in synergy, like turmeric works in synergy with black pepper. You combine the two and it has an anti-carcinogenic effect. It has an antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-mutagenic effect on the human body. You combine a cruciferous vegetable with the right oil and it has a better effect on the human body. So you see, it's the synergy of food that works magic. It is wrong to claim here that nutrition alone or a particular food will take away your cancer. And we're not here to say that anti-angiogenic foods will take away your cancer. No, it is going to assist you. It is going to change that environment in your body that I just spoke about. So now what happens when we have blood vessels growing uncontrollably? We see cancers. We see tumor. We see advancement in arthritis. We see advancement, advancements in endometrial cancers and end, endometriosis as well. Something is feeding the cells to grow and it is, the, it is the uncontrollable growth of these blood vessels. We also see it in multiple sclerosis, which is why it is so important for MS patients to understand the effect of their blood vessels on their condition. Now that's when it grows too much. What happens when it grows too little? When it's insufficient growth, we have more problems. We have wounds that don't heal, chronic wounds that don't heal because you have insufficient blood vessels to provide nutrients, create inflammation, remove toxins from the place of the wound. So you see that creates a problem. We have heart disease, we have stroke, we have neuropathy, and we have erectile dysfunction as well because you have less blood vessels to keep the blood flow working just fine. So you see nature works both ways. It's not about just going and feeding yourself on anti-angiogenic foods, expecting it to work. Your body has that intelligence to stop the growth when it is required. When it is uncontrollable, that's when we have problems and we need to do things about it. Okay, so coming to the next point, we need to understand that every one of us have cancer cells in our body, microscopic cancer cells in our body. We're fine, our immune function keeps us safe as long as we don't develop these new blood vessels so that they can be fed into a tumor or fed into growing and spreading. So let's get straight. Oh, another interesting point. It's not just fat cancer cells, it is also fat cells. We need to understand that fat cells grow when blood vessels grow. Because again, what feeds fat cells? Nutrients and oxygen, again. So when you find yourself putting more and more fat in your belly area, you know that you are growing more blood vessels, which is why we recommend and encourage people to maintain a healthy weight. Try not, try to get out of your obesity if you are in it. Because more fat cells means more blood vessels. And now all of you will understand if you have more blood vessels and by chance they start uncontrollably growing, we have a bigger problem. So that is the connection. We don't want to make a statement that fat people get cancer. Obesity causes cancer. It's indirect. It's like this. You have more fat cells, you have more blood vessels. You have more blood vessels. It connects to exactly what we're talking about. But like I said, let's talk about the fantastic foods that have an anti-angiogenic effect on your body. So you can use this for prevention right now to make sure that your body regulates your blood vessels. And if someone has cancer, if someone is sick, if someone is obese, these very foods will also help you. So I want to interject right now with the point where doctors keep telling, certain doctors keep telling cancer patients, eat what you want, eat protein, take protein shakes, drink more milk, have more sugar. It doesn't matter. Now you should understand that what you are feeding your cells is also feeding your tumors and your cancer cells. 
So you have to understand that, yes, your doctor is right. You need more protein, but it's got to be spaced out, the right kind of protein at the right time when the digestive system is working the right way so you don't put oxidative stress on your colon, on your digestive system, creating more acidity, which makes the environment favorable for your cancer cells to grow and to spread. That's how it's all connected. No one wants to keep a patient starving or deprived of certain foods that they otherwise enjoy. It's all about understanding that there's a problem in your body and if you truly want to heal, there are certain small little things that you're going to have to do to break this vicious cycle and change the environment in your body. So let's talk about the first food. It's Reservatol found in grapes. Yes, it's also found in red wine, but we're not going to talk about red wine. Yes, red wine has its benefits. It has to be done at the right time. A lot of people overdo it on wine. They become acidic, and because they become acidic, it's bad for them. But if you eat red grapes or foods that have reservatol, which is mainly red grapes, it is highly anti-angiogenic on your body. Green tea pure whole leaf green tea. I'm not talking about little envelope bags which you open and there's just tea dust in. That's useless for your health. You need the whole leaves which you can brew at home. Green tea is fantastic as an anti-angiogenic food. Even black tea, even plain black tea is fantastic. Now, it doesn't mean you drink five cups of green tea in a day, but if you can have a cup of black tea and a cup of green tea, or maybe two, it's the synergy between both teas that has a cumulative effect on your blood vessels. So you see, technically, it's the sum of small things that makes the whole picture beautiful. So don't look for the whole result. Look for the small things that add up to the whole result. So it's the synergy of food. Then you have nutmeg powder again, which is fantastic for your blood vessels. Cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, if it's local to you, cabbage, cauliflower, radish, arugula, all of these mustards, all of these are fantastic cruciferous foods that has an impact impact on your cancers. Why on your cancers? Because it is anti-angiogenic. It's as simple as that. You have mushrooms. We know there are things like reishi mushroom today. So many mushrooms which are used as immune boosters for people who have cancer or even people who have low immunity. It is because of this reason. Then you have curcumin, which is found in turmeric. We spoke about yellow gold. We spoke about turmeric being anti-carcinogenic. Why? Because of the anti-angiogenic effect that it has on your blood vessels. In India, in Ayurveda, there's an herb which is super powerful. It's called Gugul. Now, this Gugul herb, you need this herb. You need to take it under supervision. The right amount of dosage for you. It is fantastic for your immunity. It is fantastic for prevention of disease as well because it manages all of your blood vessels in a, in, in a way that we just spoke about. Then you have the bean family, things like rajma, chana, so whether it's hummus, whether it's your rajma, chaval, whatever it is, we all know the health benefits of beans. A lot of people can't have beans because it makes them gassy and they get acidic. The problem's not with the bean, the problem's with your gut. You have a weak gut, that's why you can't break it down. So work on your gut first because having a little bit of beans in your diet in a week is fantastic. It is anti-angiogenic. Elagic acid today has become the new superfood. Okay, you get it in the form of pills and you know all of that stuff. It's simply found in strawberries. It's found in pomegranate. Elagic acid is fantastic to control uncontrollable growth of your blood vessels. So you see, these are basic foods which are easily available. Now, what I want to make easy for all of y'all is, then you have tomatoes, garlic, onion, and all of that stuff. When you look at the basics of an Indian meal, okay, or when you look at the basics of an Italian sauce, it has the ingredients that are highly anti-angiogenic. So today I'm gonna to talk about this right now. I'll post it later in the group as well on the thread. So imagine if you have a base which you can use tomato, onion, garlic, black pepper, turmeric. Now you have a choice to use olive oil if it's only a light saute, but if you're gonna cook something then you wanna use either coconut oil or pure ghee or any of your cold pressed oils, it doesn't matter. But this is the base, tomato, garlic, onion, black pepper, turmeric, and olive oil, or the oil that you choose. Now this is a base. To this, you can add pumpkin and make it a vegetable because pumpkin is a great, great immunity booster. It is one of the best immunity boosters on this planet. Such a fantastic food. So you can cook a vegetable with this base, or you can make a stir fry, or let's make it better by adding any one of the cruciferous vegetables that we spoke about. You can add broccoli, cabbage, or cauliflower. Now you can make this a stir fry, or you can make this a soup, or you can make this a topping for maybe whatever food that you eat. This is the base. Now imagine if most of your food has this common base. 
You can have a different dish every day, but your base stays the same. And this is actually a very normal base in most Indian cooking. It's the base of a normal curry. It's the base of a normal vegetable. But you see, you've got the best of so many anti-angiogenic foods in. So if you just put these ingredients, if you're Jain, you keep out the garlic, you keep out the onion, that's fine. You can have the cruciferous vegetables. You know, from this list of vegetables that we just spoke about, this is how you make your diet wholesome. This is what a balanced diet really is. This is a diet that can prevent, possibly prevent the onset of disease when you have your exercise in place, your sleep in place, your emotional mind in place. This is what a balanced diet is. It's not about going low calorie, high carb, high protein and all of that stuff. Your body needs balance and then it is going to work for you the way it was designed. And this is the importance of anti-angiogenic foods and this is the importance of angiogenesis. This is what happens in the human body every day and these are the things that can control it. So it's as simple as that. It comes down to inexpensive common foods that you have, that you have. Put them together be creative in the kitchen, put these things together. And that's how you build a solid diet that can help you prevent the onset of diseases. And if you're going through disease, it's the very same diet that can possibly help you to heal and reverse it. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.